Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about the 11 major misconceptions of hitting in baseball, hitting mechanics, okay? Uh, I think there's a lot of philosophies when it comes to hitting. Uh, guys believe a lot of different things about the hitting mechanics, but I think there are also a lot of things that are just flat out not true and it doesn't work that way. So that's what we're going to talk about, the 11 major misconceptions of hitting a baseball. Number one is that you should line up your knocking knuckles when you're gripping a baseball bat. This is not true, okay? Let me take that back. This is going to be different for everyone. I used to teach that you should have a box grip, which is here, where your big knuckles line up with the small knuckles versus your knocking knuckles, small knuckles, small knuckles. But now what I teach is it's going to be different for every hitter. And the reason why it's going to be different from every hitter is because the size of our hands are all different, okay? So what I think the best grip for a hitter is, is to get down to their contact point. And when you're at your contact point, make sure that your wrists are stacked right into your hand, okay? So for me, if I get down to my contact point, my wrists are stacked right into my hand right about here. So for me, I have a box grip, maybe a little bit more than the box grip, okay? And that's where I feel best at. But maybe someone with smaller hands is going to be a little bit closer this way, okay? But you can see, the further I get to knocking knuckles, look at my wrists already, okay? If I was going to punch someone, would I want to punch them like this? Let me see. What's the best angle? Would I want to punch them like this? Heck no, I break my wrist, right? So I want to be stacked right behind my hand, just as if I was going to punch someone with both hands at my contact point, making sure that wrist is right stacked over the hands. And that's the best way to grip the bat. So it's going to be a little bit different for everyone, but try it out, see where you're supposed to be at. Number two, you should get your stride foot down early in the swing. This is the worst one. I hate this one the worst because basically what you're doing is you're making, you're making it a two-part swing when it should be a one-part swing. You're taking all the momentum that you're trying to create and you're stopping it and then restarting it. It's silly. I don't think anyone should do that. I think you need to use your stride for timing. You definitely need to time off the pitcher, but it needs to be one part swing. Okay, so it needs to be fluid. Top your time in the pitcher, come up, show, and go. Okay, versus get your stride foot down early, wait, and then unload. It doesn't work like that, all right? As a matter of fact, if you look at a lot of the best big league hitters from the outfield view, the camera that they shoot coming this way, you can see that a lot of guys don't get their front foot down, it doesn't hit the ground until that ball's about halfway to them. Crazy to think about, I don't want you practicing that, but my point is it needs to be a one part swing and not a two part swing. Number three, don't drop your hands on your load. Okay, now, this is wrong again. It's wrong and it's right. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why it's, why it's right is because if you're dropping your hands and you're staying down here, starting your swing from down here, obviously that's no bueno, okay? But, if you drop your hands in your load and you come back up, it's okay. And to tell you the truth, a lot of hitters do this, okay? So, when you're starting that stride, and, and if you got a little bit of a dip, as long as you get back up to a good spot to where you can still have some torque on that barrel when you're driving through the ball, you're okay. You can drop your hands a little bit here, as long as you get to that good spot when you start that swing, okay? Now, a little easy tip to think about is, at the top of your load, at the top of your hands, you should be pointing down at the catcher's feet with the knob, okay? So if I'm here, if I drop my hands and I come back up, I'm okay as long as I get to this spot and I'm right around this back shoulder area. Number four, you need to swing down to the ball. This is the worst piece of advice that you could give a hitter and I think it's probably the biggest misconception out there is that you need to swing down to the baseball. 
In reality, you're going to get a little bit. I, also, I made a video on this. I'll leave a link right here. It's a great video, so you got to check that one out. That shows the back path and all that. I won't get into it as much here. But the back kind of gets into a lag position and then in the zone, in the zone, in the zone, in the zone, out of the zone, okay? So you want to try to be in the zone as long as possible. And if you're swinging straight down to this ball, you're not. You're going to be in the zone, out of the zone, okay? You're going to hit a lot of choppers into the ground too. Number five, you need to squash the bug with your back foot. Now, this is wrong, okay? You, the best hitters in the game, when they get to their contact point, are either going to be a slightly off of the ground, believe it or not, trust me when I say that, slightly off of the ground or on that toe at contact. Now they're going to end up catching themselves back here, okay? So from start to finish, it may look like they have turned, but in reality, they're driving off that back knee here and then catching themselves, okay? Now, a lot of younger guys who do that are going to be very rotational, and I don't mean it in the sense of rotational hitting, rotational, but rotational with their body, and everything's going to be flying out here. So to fix that, you need to be getting more in a line energy-wise versus just spinning out, okay? So don't squash the bug, drive off of that back leg, and then catch yourself. Number six, your head doesn't move in a swing. Now this is wrong as well. I get what you're saying when you say your head shouldn't move in a swing, but what I see when I tell guys, when I tell hitters, stop moving your head, don't move your head, is they try to be so still that they're not ever getting their weight into their front side, okay? So this is not true. You'll see the best hitters, it's going to be very small movement, and more importantly, it's going to be on the same plane, their head, okay? Because if they're going up or down, so if, if a guy's starting here, eye level's here, and then they're dropping to here, that's not good. Because now their eye level is coming up and down, right? And when that happens, that ball looks like it's moving when it's really not. Or it may be moving, and it's, you're making it even harder to hit because you're making it look like it's moving more than it is. Okay? But your head will move a little bit going into your front side. If you're getting enough energy going this way, Watch where I start here, pick something out behind me. And when I go, I've got a little bit of movement this way. I stayed on the same plane, and then when I finish, I'm gonna finish it a little bit, even tiny bit back. So I kinda of go forward and a little bit back, okay? So there is a little bit of movement in the head. Now, the young guys who are here, and they're pulling out and looking this way, that's no bueno, of course. You gotta keep that head down on that ball at contact, front shoulder to back shoulder, finish it, and then watch that beautiful hit, all right? Number seven, you should have fast hips when you're hitting. I think this is probably one of the most misunderstood things about hitting and pitching, uh, is that you need to have fast hips, okay? Now, the reason why I think it's misunderstood is because there's been some studies done that show the faster your hips go, the more bat speed you're gonna generate or the more pitching speed you're gonna generate which is true to an extent. Meaning, yes, you will, you will be able to generate more energy that way, but it's not necessarily true in the matter that a guy, if a guy was to go even faster, he's gonna get more, okay? There's a certain limit is what I'm saying. You can be too fast with your hips, and a lot of guys are when they're being taught to be fast with their hips, okay? The way I like to think about the hips, and I'm gonna make a more in-depth video about this soon. But the way I like to think about the hips is, it's more about the controlled turning of the hips, the opening of it, but then the fat, the separation, the torque that you're getting, and then the fast unwinding of the hands. So the, 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 the separation and the torque needs to be somewhat under control. So you can't go too fast or you're going to be flying out. But if it's fast enough and you can keep it under control and then you can be fast back together, that's what you're looking for. But when I see guys being taught to be fast, they're going right from the bat and they're right from the get-go and they're going ah, like this with their hips. And they're just flying open. When in reality, it should be under control and then this part should be fast. Number eight, you should keep your front leg bent at contact when you're hitting. Now, I haven't heard this one 
as much lately. But a few years ago, 10 years ago, before this whole internet thing and YouTube, I would hear guys saying, when you make contact, you want to stay bent and strong on that front leg. This is obviously untrue. You want to have a firm, straight front leg at your contact point when you're hitting this baseball. When you land, you're going to be a little bit bent. All right, let me show you. I'll pull my pants up so you can see my knee. So when I land, I take my stride and everything. When I land, I've got a little bit of bend on my knee here. But as my hands come through this zone, my leg starts to straighten out. And I hit against that front leg. Okay? I want to use that as leverage to hit against. I want my energy to say, whoa, we can't go out there. Let's go out the hands. Number nine, you should let go with one hand on your swing. One hand to finish. Um, I don't like this. A couple reasons why. I think guys who are one-handed swingers will be better off if they worked on two-handed swingers. We used to have a pro catcher in here who said the biggest change that he made in his career is going from a one-handed finish to a two-handed finish. Now that's pretty, pretty impressive for a major league caliber hitter to say that that was the biggest adjustment that he made. Also, if you're one-handed swinging, you could also hurt yourself on this back arm. Now, the problem here is, I see a lot of major league hitters doing this, but here's a misconception, I think, with a lot of younger guys when they're seeing the big, league, big leaguers do this. The big leaguers are swinging, they're getting through the ball, finishing here, and releasing over here. But when young, younger players try to emulate them, they're here, and they're releasing right after contact, okay? And that's a big problem. So, teach them early to have a two-handed swing, and they're going to be better off. I think if they're letting go over here, way in the back, that's a whole different story. Number 10 is you must finish balanced in the batter's box after your swing. Now, I don't know about you, but when I see a player put a good swing on the ball, if he's falling anywhere, he's going to be over the plate. The reason why is because we want to start with a body angle, which is chest over toes, and we want to finish with that same body angle. So I'm going to be late, so I'm already kind of almost falling that way a little bit. So you're going to see a guy who puts some good energy into a swing, he may fall over this way just a little bit. Not fall over, but he's going to be... Okay? So, <coughs> being perfectly balanced, and again, I see some hitters, they'll start here and they'll finish real tall, real straight up and try to be perfectly balanced. This is no good. You're not, you don't have a good uh, axis to swing around, your body angle. You're not putting enough energy into the swing. So work on setting that body angle, keeping that body angle, and putting some energy into the swing. Attack the inside part of the baseball. And the 11th major misconception of hitting a baseball is that this bat is messing me up. The bat is not messing you up. Your head is messing you up. There's a saying, it's not the arrow, it's the Indian. All right, think about that for a second. You don't need a $400 bat if you got a two cent swing. You need to fix the swing, fix the head, stay positive, and attack the inside part of the baseball. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe and then join the free newsletter at YouGoProBaseball.com.